So, um, yeah, this will be a general introduction to the labs overall. So what uh, we'll talk about now is first we'll briefly introduce the lab advisors again, and then we will walk through what to expect from this lab class, what the goals are that we want to accomplish and what you have to do in order to participate. And we will walk through the uh, organization and infrastructure for the course, in particular the Moodle and the exercises and other infrastructure. So um, these are the names of the people that are advisors for the labs. Um, you have met Christopher previously, I think. Um, Janek and I are assistants at Weimar. Uh, Eric just now appeared here as an assistant at Leipzig. Um, all assistants um, are active in all the Moodles and you can address questions to them through the Moodle functions. Uh, Mehdi is a student in Weimar and he, is, helps, he helps us with uh, grading of the exercises for the Weimar students. The um, Leipzig students uh, don't get graded exercises because there's just too many. Here's the question, what is the form of the final exam? This is still something that is being clarified. So this depends on how the pandemic situation develops. Um, it is possible that there will be an online exam, but I think at the moment nobody knows exactly how this will take place. So if everything goes according to plan, the exams will be uh, on location in the respective university as a standard written exam. Um, regarding the Leipzig students, um, uh, you do not have to um, complete the exercises in order to um, uh, be admitted to the exam. However, it is highly recommended to do so uh, because they are actually the things that prepare you for the exam. Um, that's it. Okay, right, um, moving on. So um, what in general should you expect from the lab class? Uh, there's another question. When will the exam take place? That... So usually every university has an exam period after the term is over and we will usually the exams take place in that period. However, I think the dates are not determined yet in either place. And in Weimar, you have to do the exercises in order to be admitted to the exam. This is uh, the same way it was last year. Yes, regarding uh, part-time students who are currently abroad, I see a question right now. Um, we know of the difficulties of the situation and uh, if uh, you will not be able to um, uh, attend the exam in person, uh, we will try to make it happen somehow, but uh, it depends now very much on your situation and the situation around the exam. So we cannot and should not uh, uh, determine this right now. Uh, it should be determined, yeah. I guess, uh, uh, ahead of time uh, next year, what exactly yes. will happen. We will take these things into account and it is good to approach us early if there are things about your situation that are special and that should be considered. So yes. it's good to we will try to accommodate and... most special situations that everything that is in our power, more or less, uh, of course, there may be exceptions that we cannot uh, uh, attend to properly, but usually we do our best. Okay, another thing since there was a question uh, when the exam will take place. So we don't know yet exactly what I do know um, and what is common for both Weimar and Leipzig University is that the um, last session for lectures and exercises for us is uh, Thursday, February the 4th, 2021. And um, the week after that in principle. Uh, no, I think, I think in, in Leipzig the lecture period ends on February 6th already. Uh, and after that, uh, yes. the exam period starts. Yes, but February 6th is, um, is Saturday. So our Yeah, I know, I know. So in the, in the week part, I, I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Sorry for the confusion. Okay. So um, what to expect in from the lab class in general? You um, will get these uh, exercises, like the ones that I showed you from the first uh, exercise sheet to deepen your understanding of what you learn in the lecture and uh, to 
to learn how to implement the basic machine learning algorithms. So, um, yeah, there will be six exercise problem sets in total. You will have a little bit less than two weeks um, to complete each one. And you are encouraged to work in groups up to three students. So this will allow you to discuss among your group and uh, share the workload a little bit. We will discuss the solution to the labs uh, during the lab sessions. And for the Weimar students, you will receive uh, points for each exercise sheet that you submit. You have to reach at least half of the points in each exercise sheet in order to uh, be admitted to the final exam. So the exercise sheets contain both theory questions and programming exercises. As you saw, the programming exercises are in Python. We choose Python because this is currently something like the official language of machine learning research and development. So this is, I would say, the most useful language to learn for this particular uh, problem. And if you haven't done so, um, if you know how to program otherwise, I think you can learn Python in parallel to working on these exercises. It uh, tends to be a rather simple language to pick up. Uh, I see. So this. Yes, that is correct. The exercises are only for taking part in the exam. So um, yeah, the course is organized, um, well, primarily through the course webpage. This is a short link for the, for the BIMA course. If you follow this, um, you get to the course page that you've seen. And we'll walk through this in a bit. The second thing you need to know is the Moodle page, where you submit your exercises and discuss with your fellow students. Finally, you should keep an eye on your email, of course because there may be announcement and uh, Moodle also sends announcements there. And um, as optional infrastructure, we provide a Jupyter Notebook server to run and develop your code. So, um, yeah, all these questions that I see here now will be answered in this next bit, which is, um, a quick tour of the course assets. So for that, I will switch back to my browser window. And I am starting on the page webis.de, which is uh, the landing page for our working group. In the bottom right here, you see these uh, different links. So uh, Leipzig students can use this link to go to the teaching pages. The Weimar students can use this link, which is the one that I will follow. And this one goes to our overview of lectures that we have this semester. And there you find the introduction to machine learning. And um, this uh, starts with a set of general facts about the lecture, like who we are, what uh, the workload is. You can, yeah, you can submit Jupyter Notebooks. If you do not know about HTML code and Python programming. So uh, yeah, we will get into that in a bit, I think. So um, right, where was I? OK, so um, the important link is this one. This takes you to the Moodle page for the course. In the lecture notes section, we will uh, keep links to the most, uh, to the currently relevant sets of slides. So. These are the ones that you will need for the problems on the first exercise sheet. And the bottom section is about the lab class, which most importantly has the uh, schedule and dates. OK. So to move on to the Moodle page, to this link, um, the Weimar Moodle page looks like this. There's also a link back to the course homepage. This is how you found us. Uh, currently, there's only this backup lecture room to, uh, to Zoom that we are currently using to avoid confusion. There's also a, a feature to have uh, big blue button rooms just for the members of your lab working group. Um, when the labs are um, 
is shown in this schedule here. So this is the place that you should check to know whether there is a lab session. For next week, there is one. For um, the week of the 19th, there is also one. For the week uh, after that week, there is none planned yet. But if we do another tutorial or something like that, then it will be added to the schedule here. OK, so this um, you can use to chat to your group members. I will clarify after we talk about group selection, I think. This is a link to the Jupyter Notebook server. We'll also get to this later. This is a um, another video chat tool that we are evaluating where students from all universities can chat together. We might go to this at the end. Um, there's a link to the lecture notes again here and a set of literature that we provide. So these will be um, relevant books and excerpts from those. The first um, introductory chapter is uploaded here already as a PDF. And uh, we recommend you to read these as you follow the course. The most important section for you at the moment is this highlighted uh, section on lab class preparation. First of all, we ask every student to take this uh, pre-course survey and provide the basic information. The uh, key thing that we need to know here um, is how many credits you want for this course. Spymar students can get either 4.5 ECTS credits. Uh, oh, I got the abbreviation wrong twice here. So it should be ECTS, of course, or six ECTS credits for this course. How many credits you get depends uh, primarily on how much work you do for the course. And uh, how many credits you can use depends on uh, what degree program you are and when you start scheduling, uh, studying, sorry, and whether you are taking this course as an elective. So this um, bit here also explains this, and I hope this is clear. So you get six ECDF, ECDS if you take this course as an elective in any degree program. That's just um, how electives work here. If you are a digital engineering student, or you are a computer science for digital media student who started studying this year, or you are an HCI student who started studying last year or this year, then you get uh, six credits by default. Um, the, to the difference in workload, we will get to that in a bit. You get 4.5 credits if you uh, are a CS4DM student and started studying before this year, and you take the class as a regular model, so not an elective. If you are an HDI student who started before 2019 and take the class as a regular model, it's the same. Also, if you are enrolled in one of the older computer science uh, programs, such as media informatic or computer science and media, and you also take this class as a regular model, not an elective, then you also get 4.5 credits. So back to the overview. The next um, thing to do in preparation for the lab classes is to find a lab group. We provide a forum here where you can talk to your fellow students. And I see if you, uh, if you are already using this to uh, find people who want to form a lab group with you. You have to pay attention that everyone in the same lab group also um, works towards the same number of ECDS credits. Once you have agreed people uh, agreed on with some people to form a lab group, you click this next thing, lab group selection. And there is a list of um, possible groups. The groups have uh, standardized names. All the Weimar groups start with a W. Um, so CS4DM before 2020, taking it as a specialization. This again is explained in this uh, survey. So you are a CS4DM student who started studying before 2020 and uh, I presume a specialization is the same as a regular model. Uh, I'm not sure if you can change your answers, to be honest, but it's not that important. This poll is informal. As long as you know what the correct answer is, and even if that is different to what you submitted here, and you make your group selection accordingly, then you are fine. What counts is the group selection. So back to that. You have uh, found hopefully two other students who uh, want to form a lab group with you and you know how many credits you, you get. Then you select a group from this list that uh, still has the requisite number of places available. You can see this the capacity to the right here. 
the group ID shows you the number of credits. So uh, all the Weimar groups start with a W and then a 4.5 for the ones that get 4.5 credits and then a six for the ones that get six credits. And after that, it's just a running number to different, tell the different groups apart. So if you show descriptions here, this is also uh, shown here again. So you and your uh, lab mates pick the same group here and then you go to, um, okay, I already picked one as an experiment earlier, so I pick this last one here and you go to save my choice. And then your group will be the one you selected here. So you should be able to always go back to the screen as well. That class group selection to uh, see this. At the moment you can still change your uh, selection and we will allow you to still change it after the first uh, lab worksheet is due, just in case there are any problems and you realize that you cannot work together the way you hoped, then we leave the option open to change your group selection once after the first worksheet. But after that, it will be final. So um, having selected a group, you can submit solutions to the exercises. So here's a section for test exercise that um, we provide to demonstrate this, this workflow. Okay, I see I have already done something here. I might have to delete my submission so I can show this again, one second. Okay, maybe I will just show it with one of the real exercises. This is taking too long for my taste. So you have to be a member of a group in order to submit an exercise solution. And uh, for example, for the theory questions on the first worksheet, we want you to submit a single PDF with all the answers. And this is um, set up in Moodle so that only that is allowed. So when you click on uh, add submission for this particular submission, you can add a file here. So you just select one from your computer. Uh, I don't have a PDF handy, but well, let's just assume I, uh, don't hang on. I will quickly add one. Just so we have done this, this whole process once. Maybe just... Uh, we can't um, see now what you are selecting. Uh, uh, the screen okay, back because it's a pop-up. That doesn't matter. I will just pick some random PDF from my machine. So, mm -hmm. And then uh, it shows up here. And then you click upload this file. Then it shows up in the list of files uh, added here. So typically, you will only be able to add one file. We will make an exception for this annotation task, as I explained earlier. Then you click Save Changes. For most exercises, it is enough if one of your group does this. And Moodle actually shows draft not submitted here because um, you can add the option of uh, having to click Finalize Submission, but we uh, don't use this feature. So as, so as soon as a file is uploaded before the deadline expires, then you are fine. You can still edit it afterwards as long as the deadline is not expired. So for example, replace this file. We will only collect the solution once the deadline actually comes. Okay. Then, yes, so for the individual exercises, we will show the deadline again here, just so that this is abundantly clear. For exercise one, we also um, show which exercises the different groups have to submit. So this is the, different in, uh, the difference in workload that I mentioned. If you want 4.5 credits for this course, for the first exercise, you have to submit exercises two, three, and six. You are always um, invited to submit more than is listed here. But these are the ones that will be graded uh, and count toward your uh, exam admission requirement. If you want to get six uh, credits, you will have to submit um, maybe one or two exercises more than the other uh, students. This will uh, always be listed next to the submission here. 
um, yes. as well. Okay, because uh, I was a bit confused about the by default um, six ECTS and by default four and a half ECTS. Um, but okay, then it's clear. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the exercise remain questions in the exercise one. Um, we will probably change the wording and call this worksheet or something just so there's uh, not this confusion anymore. This is also, this is something that, uh, yeah, yeah, never occurred when we were. If we just call it exercise sheet, clear. exercise sheet and exercise, this yeah. makes sense. Yes, good idea. We will do that. Okay. Right, so um, yeah, for the first exercise sheet, we have uh, three submission uh, links as already indicated earlier. So for the theory questions, you will use this one and submit a PDF. For the annotations, you will use this one and submit a CSV file that uh, comes out of the annotation tool. And for the code, you will submit, uh, you will use this one. And here you will submit an, an HTML file. And how and why this works, we will get to next. So um, as I indicated, we provide this Jupyter Notebook server for you to work on your code. If you, for example, don't have a very powerful computer at your end, or you are not sure how to install the Python environment that you require, um, you can use this. And this is um, a system where each of you gets a separate Python Notebook environment that you can use to develop your exercise answers. This is the file that I showed earlier with this example for the programming exercise. Um, question from Flow, despite the different ECTS, we will all write the same exam. Yes, that is the idea, yeah. So in um, previous semesters, we had, uh, uh, last year we did it uh, exactly the way we are doing it now, and this works better from experience. Before that, we sometimes did it this way that the students who need more ACTS uh, only get an additional exam question or something like that. But um, we find this way is, uh, is better. Okay, so um, in order to uh, get this Python notebook to something you can submit in Moodle, there is a button here, download as, and there you choose HTML. If you, uh, yeah, and you save this to your computer, I'm doing this now, you probably don't see it. And um, I will then also do this submission example here. So this file that will then be called lab1.html. And you go to save changes and that's it. And here again, only one person from the group has to do it. So if you are not using our notebook server, but uh, your own IDE, you can also just produce a single Python file and rename it to HTML. This HTML stuff is because that is what Moodle accepts as uploads. Okay, so I want to get back to a previous question from Amir. Uh, you asked, if we do not know about HTML code and Python programming, should we carry on with the course? So um, basic knowledge of programming is a prere prerequisite for this. So if you have never programmed before, then you will definitely not be successful here. So then I would suggest to um, take other courses first to uh, work on this. If you're very ambitious, you can still try to learn programming in parallel and uh, with a lot of dedication and some luck, I think it's possible to still be successful in this course in this situation, but it will be a lot of work and I would not necessarily recommend it. If you are, for example, very fluent in some programming language, let's say C or Java, but you've never used Python before, then I think uh, it will only be a small amount of extra work to get familiar with Python. So, uh, if you have never done any HTML, I think it's fine. The, the HTML features that we need here are basic enough that you can learn what you need to know as you go along. So we could, uh, for example, um, we have a lecture on web technologies that you can use as a refresher. Um, let me see, this is 
here. So there, uh, I see this lecture is in German. That, of course, makes it a bit difficult for people taking this class. But I think, um, yeah, okay, no, then uh, what you could take away from these slides anyways is the uh, external links to the W3C documentation on the uh, various document languages. Um, a good page that is probably also linked here is uh, w3schools.com, I think. Yes, uh, okay, fine, I'm in private mode anyway. Um, right, this um, explains the basics of many different web technologies if you want to understand some HTML concepts that might be useful for this course, then you can also find out about these here. And I think this is simple enough also to see this for the first time in parallel to taking this course. Okay, let's see if there's anything else I should mention. Okay, I think this basically covers what I wanted to tell you about. So maybe, um, yeah, let's let's take some time for, for any questions that might still be there on your end. I will just wait a little bit in case people are still typing or thinking about questions they might have. Is there an indicator when someone types? I'm not sure. So I haven't seen one here yet. No, mm. that is a bit. Perhaps it can also be activated. We have to go through the Zoom settings once, and uh, yeah. I think we will continue using Zoom anyway. It's uh, it's I not risk we stability. Think we are better, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So on the exams, we don't typically ask for code, and I don't think we will do this this year either. Um, so the questions are more theoretical, but we might ask for things that you learn from the programming exercises. It could I be questions this, uh, on the algorithms, so pseudocode, yeah. and uh, but no, no uh, programming on white paper. Yes. So uh, if you passed the exam ex admission requirements last year already, then these are still valid and you don't have to do them again. Still, I very much recommend that you do do them again because this is good preparation for the exam nonetheless. Yes. So question, is NumPy applicable in this course? Uh, yes, there will be um, parts of the course where we'll use NumPy. And you are free to use it from the beginning if you already know it, that is fine. So we have reserved um, two time slots for the exercises, just in case to be flexible in being able to deal with uh, technical disasters like we had this morning. Typically, we will not be here the full time from 9.15 until uh, 3 p.m. But you can also consider this uh, kind of our office hours where we are typically available and are planning to deal with this lecture in particular. You have a good chance of reaching us if you have questions. You will be told whether you um, satisfy the grading requirements for the exercises, so we will um, give you grades through Moodle if you need a grade for the exercises. So you will know. So uh, again, um, the exercise one through five that uh, we are referring to there 
are the exercises one, two, three, four, five on this uh, worksheet for exercise one. And this is what is due um, on, the, on the deadline there. Then I would suggest we stop this recording here.